It only took 10 years, but the gringo poppy done quit. Brendan Schaub is no longer a stand-up comedian. All right, well, that may be a overstatement of what's going on here, but Brendan Schaub has finally decided to call it... Let's, just, no, let's not say he's calling it quits. Let's say he's taking a step back from comedy. And uh, I'm not going to do exactly what everybody else did when they re reacted to this. I'm just going to talk about it from my perspective, which is someone who was a long time... Joe Rogan fan, and then found himself listening to Brendan Schaub show up on the Rogan show, and I'm like, who is this guy? Why is he talking? Why is this a thing? For those of you who don't know, obviously Joe Rogan, biggest podcast in the world, Brendan Schaub is a former UFC fighter and I guess like part-time NF, not even NFL, maybe he was like a professional athlete, and Sure, he maybe he knows what he's talking about a little bit, but essentially the 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 long and the short of the story is, Bren Schaub had was doing okay in the UFC, but clearly Joe Rogan saw something that he didn't think worked out so well, and they were friends, and Joe convinced Brendan to quit the UFC because he was like, your commitment, my friend, is not there. So, mayhaps you should no longer be fighting. I don't want to see you get hurt. So there's a whole conversation about this. But more recently, and, and then he convinced him, he's like, you should do stand-up. And he's got a very very successful podcast. Criticism for me is like an ant throwing, uh, being like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite you to a human, but I'm a bullet ant. I got poison in my veins, so I'm coming after it. Now, Brendan, the the funny thing about Brendan is he's one of those guys who has a lot, who has money, who's not gonna keep his money, his money gonna dwindle, and he's had many controversies, and there's many times when people are like, "We'll cover, we'll look at a couple clips, we're gonna go through some things," or maybe he's not the funniest stand-up comedian in the world. That's where Rogan convinced him to become a stand-up, just like he convinces everyone to start a podcast. And you got to remember here, I've been podcasting for more than five years, so I did not listen to Joe Rogan. I did it myself. And uh, we have our little show here, which we like to do. And throwing stones at celebrities is always amusing. So I think the big trigger for this, though, could be the beginning of the downfall might have been Cat Williams finally pointing out the Joe Rogan's homeboys aren't as funny as everybody thought they were. And I'm going to be amongst the group when they first started Sober October, maybe six years ago. I forget when it all started. But Ari Shafir and Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura and Brendan Fraser. And it, 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 it's just, it's too much. They all. Now, some of them were stand-ups before, and Tom Segura can be funny at times. But Tom Segura just likes making fun of poor people at this point. And it's like, bro, I don't know that you're going to keep your money at the rate that you're spending it, just like the rest of them. You can't keep... You're going to run yourself... You're going to be like an NBA player after they finish with the NBA. You're going to be broke. So let's take a look. Cat Williams started all of this, in my opinion, when he said this. Cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So that's where the first shots were fired. Where they've got the six comedians, they don't know that Joe's been pushing out. And I named how many of them? Uh, I named Brendan Schaub, Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer. I watched your movie. I want my money back. Nah, it wasn't that bad. But you're not you're not the funniest part of it. You're lucky Mark Hamill was in it. Ari Shafir, 
And then is he also who else could could he be talking about the the whiskey ginger? Maybe. And then there's one more who used to do much much better. We'll get back to him um, as soon as I remember what his name is. See how that works? You just forget who is funny. Uh, but there's one more comedian that I'm gonna rip who used to do something funny when he actually produced a real show. But uh, what is his name? Oh, I can't remember. But he's he's host of the Flagrant Two, so you'll know who who I'm talking about. Not important enough for me to remember. Sorry. Anyway, let's move on. This is Joe Rogan. And I'm kind of stealing bits from everybody else because it's too hard for me to do the research. I'm not going to do all the heavy lifting here. So thank you to whoever's podcast. was stealing somebody else's podcast. The funniest thing I want to mention to this is there's like this whole subsection of podcasts that literally live outside of the Joe Rogan sphere, which I think is kind of funny. And I'm just going to lay them out like podcast cringe and too lazy to try and all those guys like you live to rip down these guys. But when they aren't famous anymore, you're not going to have a podcast. So I'm kind of curious as to what your game plan is. You got famous for piggybacking and basically clipping out the Rogan show and clipping out the fighter and the kid and all that stuff. And you guys are you're going to struggle after this. So. Why you should tear these guys down, I don't know. Andrew Santino is one of them. That's the Whiskey Ginger. Who's the other one? Anyway, let's listen to this. And then on this podcast that he shouldn't... Yes. Like, when do you feel like a fighter should walk away? Like, for well, example... me and him, I was friends with him. So I knew that he wasn't really committed. And also, I trained with him a few times, and I knew that like, it was his, his lust for training wasn't there. Wasn't there. And his... I was worried that neurologically he was suffering because you can only get KO'd so many times. So that's Rogan talking about uh, Schultz, not or not Schultz. <laughs> I'm t- the sixth comedian is Andrew Schultz. He's part of the flagrant too. And Rogan is, is talking about Brendan not being able to keep going because he, you know, he trained with him. He's like, he sent something inside of him that wasn't going to keep going. So if you don't have that killer instinct, you're going to get knocked out. But now this is the fighter and the kids reaction. Uh, so this is Brendan reacting to Cat Williams saying, I'm one of those guys that, <laughs> that, that isn't funny. And... Um, I think it's kind of amusing because because the, the Rogan Six, there could be more than six. It could be like the Rogan Eight, the Rogan Ten. There's a handful of comedians out there, you know. And sorry, friends, you aren't the last bastion of 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 you know freedom of speech. That's not how this works. But let's keep going. And I, I hey, I, I think Rogan. Rogan's show was really good for a really, really long time when it was just like him yucking it up with his friends. But once he's like start telling everybody and their mom they needed to have a podcast, and then he's been bringing on like some some like grifters and like I don't know what what he's doing now. I know he's got a lot of shows he wants to put out, but it's like oh, there's only so many times you can tell me about the bear story, Rogan. We talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen. Yeah, people people are damn me. Go, he's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I'm, like, I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight sides. Yeah. No- so that's literally Brendan Brendan Schwab saying, "I'm not there to be a comedian on Rogan's show." I know he's talking about the fight companions, but he's literally saying, "I'm not there to be to be uh you know comedy relief bro you're supposed to be a comedian you've been in stand up for 10 years gringo poppy right that's a thing i was going to bring up how badly rated it is but i'm sure everybody knows it's like one of the worst rated comedy specials of all time it's like a 1.1 yeah mingo he's talking about you you've been on there more times than anyone i would love to have him on joe said we we have we talk about him all the time if he's down i'll make it happen yeah, people people are damn me. Go, he's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I went. I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight sides. Yeah. There's no. But I'll tell he's you, he's not that. talking about me. He's I talking saw about Cat Williams at the comedy store. Time. 
couple of times. He's a genius. Oh, Cat is a. Here's the thing. He's, I want no heat. Hey, Cat, I'm with you. Dog. No, no, no. I'm with dude, you. He's as good. Whoever's your enemy is my enemy. When he's on, when Cat Williams is on as a comic. <laughs> I'm with you because I'm not that funny. I just think it's funny that these guys are trying to defend them. Like, I guess they're trying to defend themselves as stand ups or I. Well, clearly, uh, Brennan gave up. And now, look, if Brennan wants to retire because he should just, I don't know what he should do, because he's got a bunch of shows, and he's got, you know, I, I there was literally, he was, ju- uh, Bobby Lee was just on Rogan, and Bobby Lee was talking about how all these guys have these enormous staffs, and Rogan's managed to keep it down to like four to six guys, you know, and half of them are security to keep people out. Where now, uh, and then this is Brendan saying that he's he's not quitting comedy. He's he's taking a step back. I don't. He's lost a ton of weight. I don't know what's going on here. And he's got a mustache that he should be taken out behind the shed and old yellered for. I don't know what's going on here. But I get it. If he's got family issues and he wants to, like keep doing your podcast, dude. I know everybody bags on you because you struggle to speak English, but studio had a health scare with the baby girl. If you guys saw my social media, she went in for emergency surgery. Um, she has trouble breathing and she's been in and out of the hospital. Like I explained on my, uh, Instagram post. So yeah, she had to have emergency surgery. So he's got things going on with his family. I'm not going to bag him for it, but the one most damning thing in all of this, just to show how far Brendan has fallen from the comedy world is that Rogan won't let him perform at the comedy mothership, which is the club that Rogan owns in Austin, Texas. So Rogan clearly understands that, you know, Schaub has not put in the work to be a real stand-up. He doesn't work hard enough. Yeah, he does a lot of podcasts, but he doesn't write enough material to have a stand-up act. And even though he's been given all these chances to do shows, I mean, everybody just destroys this guy. So maybe he'll make... Maybe he'll learn a new skill where he can just make you know balloon animals or something like that. He should just do a show. I, I hate to bag on the guy because he's got family stuff on, but what did he really ever belong in comedy? Was he really that funny? I don't think so. I don't understand why Rogan's like, everybody should just be a stand-up. It's like, bro, it took you 30 years to become like a world-famous stand-up. And you had to eat a lot of garbage to get there. And, uh, you know, even after 10 years, Shab doesn't put in the work to be a good comedian. So I just don't, uh, I, I can't even show you his, his stand up because it's just not funny. Um, but that's all there is. It looks like he's taking a step back. He's not going to do it. He's going to do his podcast, but he's not going to do everything. Like he's not going to tour anymore. He might just do some small stand up shows. And, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that it's about time Brendan put himself out to pasture? Clearly he's put himself out to stud. Um, and I guess the other point I wanted to make is that he had a baddie wrangler. For those of you who don't know what a baddie is, a baddie is uh, the bro used to go out on tour and pick up girls, even though he's married with kids. So that makes him kind of a scumbag. So he had a producer who would wrangle these girls for him, but he apparently treated the producer bad enough where there was a, a falling out. Maybe he fired him, maybe he quit. But the guy spilled all the tea all over the place and let everybody know that he was a scumbag, not including a bunch of female comedians coming out and being like, this mf -er who's married with kids was trying to pick me up. So God bless him and God bless his wife. I hope his family stays intact. I hope his family stays happy and healthy. But please, please refrain from the comedy. Comment on a UFC. Start a gym. I don't know what's going on, bro. Maybe eat a couple of burgers. Maybe all the Zins making you lose weight. I don't know what's going on, but he don't look healthy. He don't look happy. Get there, my friend. And in the meantime, catch us. We have a world-class podcast that you can listen to for free. 
It is on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, all those great places. You can also catch the live stream here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Friday nights. We'll also rumble it up. Either way, catch us. Come hang out. Like, subscribe. I really appreciate it. We would like it. Brendan Schaub would appreciate it if you did. Um, in the meantime, I'm on to the next one. <laughs>